Treasury Secretary Scott Besant is heading overseas to meet with the Chinese vice premier. CEOs across the country are really eager to see if the tentative tariff truce between the world's two biggest economies is made permanent or goes back to a full-fledged trade war. Whatever the outcome, China is forging ahead to show off its military war might. Breaking news overnight, a new threat bubbling up in the Taiwan Strait. In a classic rattling of the war saber, China just sailed that thing on your screen, its newest aircraft carrier, the Fujian, right into the strait. The Taiwan Strait is the body of water that separates mainland China from the island of Taiwan, which China says should be under its control. China's latest gray zone mission is to target Taiwan's undersea cables that are vital to the island's communications. Military experts are keeping a very watchful eye in the event that China's aggressive move serves as a warning shot to countries beyond the Taiwanese Strait. What is America's answer to China's new ship? Blue Water Autonomy is a U.S. company making stealth moves of its own, betting that America will need to ramp up its naval capabilities in a hurry. While it's not publicly traded yet, it just raised $50 million in a Series A round led by Google Ventures. The goal? To produce a fleet of entirely unmanned vessels for the U.S. Navy that can carry payloads, detect mines, and collect critical intel. Joining me now in a Fox Business exclusive, Blue Water Autonomy CEO Ryland Hamilton. Ryland, let me just start with asking you, what message does China's floating of this new ship right into the Taiwan Strait send to our country and our Navy? Yes. Liz, thanks for having me. We've known for a while that China has a much larger shipbuilding capacity than the U.S., and we need to act. We are a company that is designing and building next generation warships for our U.S. Navy. And when you say next generation, this is pretty incredible. Totally unmanned. So not a single human on the ships that you plan to build? You're correct. We are building ships that have zero sailors on board. In order to do that, we're designing ships from the keel up. So tr totally different from today's manned warships. But because they don't have people on them, you can make them in months, not years. And the cost point is much lower. And so, uh, you know, that's what we've been focused on for last year. I suspect they would be smaller and more maneuverable because you don't have to house and sleep a bunch of sailors. They are smaller. So when we think about our size, we're designing them for the Pacific Ocean. So we want to make sure we have the endurance and range for that body of water. But, you know, they're approximately half a football field in length. And so they're big enough that they can carry payloads that matter in the Pacific. But they're small enough that they're, they're easy pr to produce. And they're at a lower price point than today's manned warships. Okay. So no humans aboard. I, just a, a regular person's question. How would they take evasive action quickly if there was some type of attack out on the high seas? Yeah. So we're designing them to, so they can be high speed. Uh, but they also can operate with their manned warships. We're not trying to replace today's fleet. We build the best warships in the world today. So we're complementing our fleet. We're not trying to replace it. And so these obviously operate with today's Navy fleet. So with the submarines, the aircraft carriers, the shores that are out there. And so uh, some of the missions, they're accompanying our manned warships and some they're unaccompanied. And they would be controlled from where? So uh, in some situations, they have to be fully autonomous. So they have to be able to operate with no one sort of remotely operating them. But if need be, they oh. can be operated from either other ships in the area or they could be operated from anywhere in the world. Let's talk about the cost. And I know from what I have read that you have had conversations with the U.S. Navy. Is there a deal in the works? Can you shed any light on what kind of orders you do expect to come in? Yeah, so the Navy has been a great partner and they're working with companies like us to develop these next generation sort of unmanned warships. Um, you know, and the, uh, Congress is speaking, they've allocated over $2 billion for ships like this over the next couple of years. And so we are ramping up as quickly as we can. What do you make of the belief that there's this gray zone threat to attack or at least somehow damage Taiwan's underseas cables? This is an important communications network that goes under the water and is on the Straits floor. Yeah, so there is definitely a threat. And we have seen the Navy move really quickly to adopting unmanned systems, whether it's in the air, on the surface, or underwater. We think unmanned is a way for our Navy to kind of uh, keep you know, China on its uh, feet uh, and to defend areas like the Taiwan Strait. It's been reported that China's shipyards have 
200 times the production capacity than that of the United States. How did they ramp up so quickly? What are we doing? I don't want to say wrong, but how did we fall so far behind? Yeah, so I think we've been a little bit asleep at the wheel, but recently we're uh, catching up speed in terms of thinking about uh, novel ways to get our payloads in the Pacific. Obviously, we can't compete with China and shipbuilding over the next couple of years. And so what we, do, what we have to do is we have to sort of outcompete them on the technology uh, front. And in the United States, we are leaders in autonomous technology. I understand that you today had a test out on the open water. Can you just tell me how it went? Uh, it went really well, better than we ever could have imagined. Um, we are developing the technology for these ships right now. We'll actually launch our first kind of full-scale ship next year. But we believe it's super important to test our technology every single day on the water. And so that's what we've been doing just outside of Boston. Okay, final question. When do we have the first finished one? And how much do they cost? Well, so we're going to launch our first one next year on the water. Um, these ships cost in the tens of millions of dollars. So we're not creating a sort of uh, one-way sort of attack sort of drone ship uh, that but we're, we're creating is something that can be reusable. So it's operated port to port. It can operate for thousands of miles for months at a time out in the open water. And if it does get into conflict and you lose it, like it's much better losing one of these ships than it is a manned warship. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> we don't want to, it's a lot of money there for those things to sink. Rylan, thank you for unveiling sort of this new technology on our show. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Companies called Blue Water Autonomy. We're going to keep an eye on that one.